Hi, Matteo. Um, my name is Yuslin. Um, this is Let's Get to Know Each Other, which we call in Creole, Anu Yon Apren Kon Lot. It's a pleasure to have you here. Well, to finally have you here with us. So I want you to introduce yourself to the audience and specifically to the Asian community. Absolutely. Well, before I introduce myself, I really want to say um, how much I admire you and I thank you so much for what you do for the community. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of praise. So thank you so much. My name is Mateo Galindo Lozano. I am a psychologist from Colombia, currently living in New York City. I have a lot <laughs> of going on in my life that, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's been a, a long road, right? So similar to you, I think in the psychology world, uh, what I try to advocate for is mental health. And I'm looking forward to speaking upon topics that are very necessary in today's society. Um, so thank you so much for, for having me here. Can't wait to, to get this started. <laughs> ah, thank you, thank you. It's, it's a pleasure. Um, so I, I am very, like I always said that anyone um, who study uh, or who like uh, psychology, uh, <laughs> have my respect because uh where i'm coming from in my country psychology mental health it's very taboo absolutely you can ask like many many young people or like older people about the major it's so rare to have someone's like say like proudly Oh, I'm a psychologist. Yeah. And I think what you mentioned, especially coming from, you know, our countries and, and Colombia. So I just want to go back like a little bit because uh, growing up in New York City, that's where I was born and raised. Most of and, you know, you always have this pressure from New York of, you know, finances and whatever you want to get into. But you always have this pressure that you have to be somebody. So from a very young age, I felt that pressure and I almost got lost, right? I remember doing, going to work on Wall Street when I was 19 years old, that was like my dream. And when I finally got into it, I was like, what am I doing? This is not who I am, right? I think it had a lot to do with my objective. And at the time, my objective had a lot to do with just money. So I based my happiness a lot on money. And even if there was money, I can understand that there was something wrong. I remember I started getting very sad. I'm not going to say depressed because I don't think that's, um, you know, it, it, that's something else that a lot of people um, tend to do, right? Um, diagnose themselves. I will just say I was very confused. I was very confused. I wasn't happy. There was a lot of things going on. And that was ultimately one of the decisions that made me want to go to Colombia and find myself. A lot of family live out there. And that's what brought me into the psychology world. I said, you know, this is something that I always wanted to study. I got into it. Not a lot of men in, are in it as well. That's another taboo that people refer to this as like a woman's career. And we'll get into that as well. <laughs> but I just remember falling in love, absolutely in love with psychology. Um, I One of my bases in psychology is a psychoanalytic approach. And I also love to understand just how we communicate, how we interact, and ultimately, what can I do for a community or an individual? And once I started working, and uh, I worked in a psychiatric hospital, I thought it was an, an incredible experience. So Colombia overall, which is sometimes determined the third world country, it humbled me. It humbled me as a person, as a professional. It humbled me in so many aspects of my life that when I came back to New York, I was a changed person, but I still came to you know, shock and it still shocks me that there's still this pressure, right? <laughs> there's still this pressure and you know that. So, I mean, it's just, it's just getting on the right track, uh, just being consistent persistent with my objectives and one of my main objectives now is just to continue to help a community and really 
kind of impact and have a positive impact in that world. Because I think right now, mental health is needed more than ever. You would think that a lot of people here need it, but you know, our country also needs it. And it's just a worldwide theme, I believe, a topic, especially after COVID, but a lot of people refer to COVID, oh, mental health is now an issue. It always was an issue. It was always an issue. Just people started to believe, okay, this is real. This is not just me being sad. This is something that now people are starting to understand because people are speaking about mental health. So that's one of the things as a psychologist from Colombia, before I left, a lot of my colleagues, we put together uh, what we call Humanamente. And in Humanamente, we advocate for mental health because we know there's a lot of people that still don't understand it. It's still taboo to talk about it. And I just wanna say also for your audience and people listening, it's okay to talk, especially for men. It's okay. It's okay to be emotional. It's okay to be in touch with yourself. I don't think you have to always put on this persona that you're tough. It's it's okay. So I've learned that in my whole experience. And I think going to Colombia really humbled me. And it's really put me in a position to be the person that I am today and continue to grow. Wow. wow. I'm speechless, but <laughs> I want to go back to absolutely what you said earlier. Go to Colombia, help you to not identify yourself, but help you realize what like what you wanted to do and going back to New York, going back to the US and you, you see that you were a changed person and you see like, okay, yeah, money is important, but there is more to it. Right. And, and you, you're passionate. Um, about psychology and you love what you're doing and you love helping people and you see more than than yourself but help others yeah. but the most important thing that you enjoy doing that yeah absolutely I, I think we do have a lot of pressure um when it comes to society or like uh family members or anyone around us when it comes to pick um, like, you know, a major or career mm -hmm. and, and sort, uh, because I am also can identify myself <laughs> same as you. Uh, it, it's, it's tough because we have our parents given us their opinions. Oh, I think this will be better for you or that. And even like us, we, we are thinking, oh, we need something to like, so we can like make more money, have a, a better living and, and this mm -hmm. and that. And we forget the objective Yeah. to take time and ask ourselves, what do I really like passionate about? What, like, what, what is the career for me? Yeah. And I and I thank my family a lot for that because they've always been open to whatever I wanted to study. They were just really concerned at one point that, you know, you don't always have to. Um, I I do believe because I also have friends who you know don't start have never studied in a in a, a you know a university level, but are still very successful, uh, happy people, right? I just think it was my opportunity to find something that was just, you know, it was just, just about studying, helped me interact with other people, have ideas, you know, in a classroom, that's what it's all about, right? You interact with the professor and you just kind of, you kind of just started learning about these ideas that you have and just putting them to the test, really just running with them. So I thank my family a lot for that because even if it wasn't going to be business that I wanted to study and it was psychology, I remember a lot, uh, another taboo. <laughs> I guess we're going to talk about taboos. <laughs> but another taboo that was uh, worrisome for my family was that, oh, but psychologists don't make money, right? So that's another one. And I'll just say right now, it, that's not what matters. It's That's not at all what matters. And I'm 
positive that if you're content in your life and you could make a great living for yourself and you can continue to help other people utilizing resources that are available. So this opened the door to me uh, and I told you that now I'm going to go get my MPA um, at City College in September. And I was really focused also on the mental health counseling, right? Now, the master's in public administration has really opened uh, a door for me in the sense that even if it's not necessarily psychology, I'm still gonna you know, find a way to implement psychology into this. And you know, in the workforce that we're in right now, we use psychology so much, right? Even if we don't identify as psychologists, I know my colleagues who didn't study psychology, they still will utilize it with children, with professors, with the community, with an individual. So I believe that me getting into this world is not necessarily that I'm getting away from psychology. I'm just gonna find a way to implement both, right? Put them together and just exploit that. Um, so I'm very excited about that opportunity that I'm gonna have in that, in that workforce. And I think, especially in New York City, and I know it's all around the world, but I know that if I'm gonna start in New York City, well, New York City is not, I wouldn't say, um, you know, the happiest city in the world, right? We still see conflicts. Right now I live in the Bronx and I'm I'm somebody who grew up on Staten Island. So it's totally different, the aspect, the perspective that I have now, right? And I still see that there's a lot of work to be done, especially in the youth. So that's just some ideas that I have that I feel that I can, I can really generate a positive impact. And I just always believe that if I can make a change, then I got to start somewhere. So I always started with myself. And then I see myself also as that little grain, right? That sand that if I can just keep impacting and causing that, uh, it's like a snowball effect. It will just keep going and, and it will expand to other, uh, you just start somewhere. So I believe in that so much. Um, and there's just a lot that that's been going on as well now, you know, um, we live in a society as well where in, in New York City, they call it the melting pot, but just in general, the whole world is just so diverse now. And you have all these diversities in culture, society, economic, and I think that it, it's all just causing a really great compact that people just don't know what to do. It's so much, it's overwhelming. So that's why I think this is uh, mental health right now has been a topic and I'm so glad that it is. And I, I just hope that with this, more people can come out and talk about their emotions, their their concerns, and also just look to get involved in society. It's a, you know, be in a community, help out in your community. Because I think that there's a lot of ind individuality right now. People are just concerned about themselves and it's not easy, I get it, being social. But if you're gonna start somewhere, at least start with your family, right? Just do the right thing with your family, uh, your community. And I think that's, uh, it, it's just, it's just spreading positive. And I think that's what it's all about as well. So I always try to do the right thing, even though it's not easy, right? Waking up and being happy and trying to put on this person. It's not easy. It's really not easy. Uh, and you can fake it with a smile, <laughs> but I get it. I get it, right? It's a, and I just hope that it's a message that you and I here can just keep on spreading. So that's why I applaud you. I know you you are really advocate for mental health. People that you have on here, I was actually watching uh, one of the episodes because not all of them are English, <laughs> but you had here Adam Kareem and I thought he was great. Shout out to Adam. I, a lot of the things that he said were great. Uh, his message as well and what he does for the community and what he continues to do as well is inspiring. So. I think what you do with your channel, uh, um, I just absolutely love it. So thank you so much. Oh, I thank you so much. And I know that everything that we are talking about and going to talk about right now is going to help my community, your community, everyone who's going to watch this episode because that's what we do. And I'm so glad that you are not in the box like a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we only see what's in the box. Yeah. And we forget that life it's not life is not about like like 
the moment like why now this is not what you see there's much more to it yeah absolutely be outside the box help other people stop focus on yourself like it's okay to focus on yourself because you have to be okay to be able to help others but you are not the only one mm -hmm. and helping others also is helping yourself yeah. so I, I like the fact that uh, you said um you think like you can implement and explore helping others like implementing and other major yeah. and other carriers and, and stuff like that and that that's wonderful and i think one thing that people need to understand mental health is everywhere because people everywhere and we need help whether we suffer for a mental health illness or we have a mental health issue it can be anything um so by talking about it people will diff like in my community the big issue is for people to define mental health and mental illness mm -hmm. if you are talking about mental health oh wow you are calling me crazy right so I think by having like people like me, like you talking about it all the time, um, be there for like to listen to other people, um, try to help them the way, uh, any way we can mm -hmm. and make a safe space for them. We'll like help them to like come forward to feel comfortable talking about mental health or about anything that they might think, you know, affect their well being or anything else. So <laughs> this is big, this is huge. And every um, guest that I have, I usually ask them like, what kind of approach do you think we can have with in a community who's very taboo when it comes to mental health? Well, one of the things that I feel is very important, and and I will I will totally agree with what you're saying because it, it started I started to notice that when I when I went to go study psychology, most of the taboos that people had I also had when I was a young child. For example, going to a psychologist might label you crazy, so people stay away from that even term. Oh no, I'm not going to the psychologist because I'm crazy. But it's not necessarily like that. You can go speak to someone and we'll touch upon that uh, afterwards. But I think one of the most important approaches that you can take when you're introducing psychology to a community is, is just take it as slow as possible, right? There's terms that you and I can utilize in psychology that people are just going to be like, what is that, right? They, they don't understand. So I think the approach is just educating, educating a community educating with um with just understanding what is psychology you, you we can you and i have that knowledge we've already studied it we continue to study it but now how do we find a way that other communities who don't have this knowledge will understand it and they have to understand it in their terms and those terms you have to kind of break it down right you got to deduce all those terms that we've utilized to a way that a community can understand and i think some of the approaches that you can utilize is through social media so you have a great impact with social media just try to get into that community and you have your community in the with the haitian public you have your community here as well and there's a lot of people that just don't understand what psychology is and if we try to approach that community with post with that that you know, talking about mental health and talking about diagnosis, people are going to be like, well, what is this? I mean, it's not, it's, you're not breaking that taboo for me. And the way that we can break that taboo is just saying it's okay, right? This is what's going on. It's okay to look out for help. If the, if there, there are signs that, you know, you're feeling down, well, here are some tips to make you feel better, right? You have to utilize those tools that are already in your life that you use Right. And when you're sad, well, what makes you happy? Do you like to I like to draw? Well, try doing that on your time off or a simple uh, respiratory. Right. You know, trying to breathe in, trying to breathe out, take five minutes. I mean, it's OK to slow down. Sometimes I feel like we're moving way too fast. 
way too fast. And I understand anywhere in the world, I understand because you always have this train of thought and it's so hard to have a clear mind. So it's okay also to just try to slow down, take your time and just see what's going on in your life, in your head. And I think that's a great approach. So I think what you're doing is also a, an amazing approach is just trying to, social media is, is amazing. It could be great and it could be bad, right? And you have that power that you can give a great message and help other people using this tool. So it's in your hands already. What do you do with it? And I think you're doing something great. I think that what I try to explain to my colleagues uh, from Colombia, what we're doing is something great. And you don't necessarily have to, um, you know, if the message reaches one person today, I'll be happy. If it reaches one person and it changes their way of looking at mental health, I'll be happy because that's one person who's going to impact in some way or form and carry that message as well. And it's like I mentioned, it could either snowball effect, domino effect, people will listen. And it's just a matter of trying to get that message across. So one of the ways is uh, social media. One of the other ways I think is uh, voluntary work or community work, trying to uh, work with children or families in, in, in great vulnerable states. And even if they're not in vulnerable states, people who are also, you know, the rich and, and famous, <laughs> like these are people that also need to understand what mental health is. And I think we have that uh, responsibility, right? We have a great responsibility also as people who have studied this and we have to just keep carrying that message. So I, I love to do community work for that reason, working with children or working with adults. It's a great way to get my message across. And I feel that that will uh, ultimately be my way of helping others. And like you said, if I help others, it's gonna help me as well. Absolutely. And um, I couldn't ask for like a better advice when it comes to approaches that I can use, um, you know, um, for my community. And you're right, you are right. And one of the approaches are like social media. Yeah. And I am using that. But the problem with my community is that we have something that called buzz. I don't know how it calls <laughs> in other communities. <laughs> like for example, uh, people, young people like myself and you, and even not young, middle-aged people, they are more interested in things like... Um, oh, this guy is a bad boy or this woman is like, you know, um, like girls, like, and they call it bores or something happened or like, you know, the husband just um, uh, find out the, 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 the wife was cheating on her, like things like that. Like, mm -hmm. not that I'm trying to go down in my community or talk yeah. Bad or things like that, but young people are like they're more interested in things like that. Like, okay, for example, if it was like if they were like Americans, things that like that interested them, it's like okay, learn some new things about Kylie Jenner or right. dashing or right. like anything like that, or the musician, the new actors, not even actors, the new um singer. Mm -hmm. what went on in their lives and stuff like that so they are more into that so that's why now i realize not only that i have to educate them about mental health but also make them realize that so um social media is good and also bad depends on how you use it what right. you choose to take from it um in the same way and it's okay to like buzz, yeah. to like like yeah. entertainment. That's fine. That help you probably to feel better, to laugh, to be happy, and stuff like that. But it's also um important that you take something good, something that could help you and towards life. Because now you don't have to like go to school to like like be um. Let me see. How I put, I should put that. You don't have to go to school for everything. There's so much, like you know, 
so much webinar, so much um, like other things that like you can educate yourself mm -hmm. or anything like that you can use for your own self. For example, um, we know there's a program right now um, that Biden like have, I, I believe since last year, we have uh, people coming in to the country, right? Mm -hmm. So, and the point of this program, like for those people to come in here is to get a job, like to work here for two years. So for me, I, I was thinking, I right, like, okay, there's a way that I can help not only my community, because it's not only Asian people who's coming into this country and this program, but other yeah. people. And I think the best way to help them is to, first of all, like put some resources that can help them to like, first, to know that they need a resume. They need to like do networking, like get in contact with like people, uh, you know, who usually talk about like how you can get a job or how they, they could probably help you with a resume. Like my show, for example, that I have like guests from different like background, whether they're from different country, but also when it comes to their major, they can be mus musician, they could be like doctors or anything. And when like they, they usually leave like some good advice, whether good advice and also their contact information or all always available for the audience and stuff like that so i'm like people can use the resources that you know that i'm giving that the mm -hmm. show are giving them and go back to the biden program they can look oh how to do a resume how like how could i can get a job uh oh. how to networking well that's networking because you're on social media almost <laughs> you know <laughs> like the whole day, every day. So yeah. you can look for stuff that can help you um, educated your, educating yourself and things that can help you, you know, like for your entire life. And like that, you can help other people too. So um, I was thinking about that and I was like, okay, I, I think this is not only about educating people about uh, mental health, but also about like everything how they can use social media and mm -hmm. or they can take advantage from it because there's plenty of resources and i i think they should take advantage from them i don't yeah. know what do you think <laughs> no and i think you brought so many ideas that i'm gonna try to also uh break them down because i have a few comments so going back to social media right it could be good it could be bad i mean it just all depends on how you use it, how much time you really consume it. I mean, there's so many studies that show the more time that a person is on social media, the more depressed, right? There's a correlation between it or sad, whatever. But I do believe that you, you do bring good points. Social media can have a main focus. And just going back to also what you said, uh, you know, about um, how your community calls that, right? What do they call it again? Buzz? <laughs> Buzz. Well, in, in, in my community, in the Colombian community, we call it cheese, man. <laughs> 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 we call that cheese, man. But people are love cheese, man. People love drama. People are so focused on it. And I get it. it to me, um, you know, I, I sometimes try to wrap my head around it, try to understand it. And uh, I don't come to really a conclusion around it because it's okay, right? People wanna be influencers nowadays. People wanna work in social media. They wanna do pranks, they wanna do this. And, and you know, uh, there's a lot of money in that as well. That's all I'll say. Nonetheless, I do believe that as long as you, you have that responsibility, you should also be able to carry a good message. And if you're gonna be young and you're gonna be successful in that, uh, you should also educate yourself and you should try to give back to your community. I just, that's what I believe. And not a lot of people will believe that. And, and that's all right. Now, this is something that to me is kind of a personal conception of how social media also works because they also sell you this image and this idea of how you can be more successful or how you can, you know, be a more uh, beautiful 
these are the type of things that social media also sells because there's a world of advertising and marketing that is just through social media, you will see it, right? And it's a consumption. If people are such consumers, so con uh, social media also tends to go around those routes, which is something that uh, to me is a little sad because people could get caught up in being materialistic people, right? And it's not just about how people dress or what people uh, you know, want to buy, what's the new trend. It can also be that I don't have to feel that way because uh, the money will be there or I will just be happy uh, uh, no, uh, ignoring my feelings and right going on social media, seeing that you know my favorite sport is on or right my team is winning. Things like this is what it's not just uh, you know the continent of America or Europe, it's the whole world. The whole world is caught up in this. And you were also speaking about Biden's plan and immigrants that are coming in. Now, my family, they're uh, both, of, most of my family, they're, they're immigrants. Everybody's an immigrant. <laughs> Everybody's an immigrant, just to start that off, especially in the United States. But my family, they were, you know, first generation immigrants in the United States of America. And what was their idea, right? The American dream, right? The American dream. And I'll quote one of my favorite um comedians his name is bill hicks who was also a politician he got into a lot he said that the american dream is only is only real when you're sleeping <laughs> because when you're awake i mean and people come here and they're like oh i have to work now i have to do all this stuff absolutely that's just the way it works and you were talking about that so yes we do have to educate people in making resumes they just think that they'll just hop on the bus and you know, then they get stuck, right? That bus gets stuck and it's no longer moving forward. Why? Because they don't allow themselves to also exploit their tools, their knowledge. And I think that is powerful. Knowledge is power. When I went to school, it wasn't just because I was going to read books and learn about psychology. No, it's because I was learning about so much other things, interaction, the importance of being able to communicate with another person we're are we're social so it was feeding off other people learning right and adam also said this that he will never be just the teacher but he'll always be the student because he's always learning so i do believe that you're always learning and that's what's powerful that you allow yourself to learn from others learn from the good learn from the bad learn from your own mistakes as well it's okay to make a mistake and get up you know, when you fall, you can get up and continue to strive, continue to motivate others or yourself. So, yeah, I, I thought I think you bring such important topics. And and um, it's topics that I'm also very passionate about from a very young age. I always had this curiosity of, wow, there's so many diverse people and not just diverse in culture. It's beautiful. But there's also this diverse in economics. And I'm just like, well, why does my friend have all this? And, you know, my mom is still struggling to put food on the table when we were young as a single mother. And that's something that now I realize and appreciate. So it's a humbling experience as well. But you do sometimes start to question yourself. Is there something wrong? What is going on? And when I went to Colombia, I did see, oh, my God, there is something wrong. Right. There is something wrong because there's just cultural impacts, there's uh, political impacts. Uh, it's an environment that when you get away from this, and, and I'm sure if I go anywhere else, I will say, oh my God, we have it good. It's just a matter of opening your eyes sometimes, All right? No, you're, you are so right. And you, uh, you put everything in a, such a good way, like to explain. I don't even know what to say. And I think it's so important for us to open our eyes and to see outside the box mm -hmm. because sometimes just as you mentioned, um, we think that we are having it bad and then yeah. we say, oh, okay. All yeah. right. I totally agree. So, yeah. Self-reflection is very important too. And being humble also it's very important and I always said that to myself that's so sad that for the majority of us human beings we have to go through situation mm -hmm. to be 
uh, uh, to be humble, it, it shouldn't be like that. But, you know, we do not have control of that. It's all yeah. on personality. And it could be based on experience too, but you can't, yeah. But it's so, it's so hard for like to see someone not being humble. And like for me, I, 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 I always try to understand like where people coming from, uh, why are they or the way that they are? Right. Right. What happened? And I, I really appreciate that in you. And I appreciate that you always show your true self. Mm -hmm. Showing your true self is very important. Not anyone can do that and accept who you are and accept to learn from your mistake and, and keep like, you know, self grow. It's, it's, it's yeah. so important. And for you to be like that, that will help anyone's that, you know, is friend with you. <laughs> well, trust me, it's not that easy sometimes. I, the first thing my family said when I graduated as a psychologist, they said, um, oh, you can start with us. <laughs> you can start with the family first, <laughs> right? And I, uh, it's, it's funny, but there is a bigger purpose to that. And I think that when... You, I do believe that everybody has a purpose in their life. And it's, it's, it, I think it gets to a point where people start to question their own purpose and their own road in this world. So when it doesn't align with their ideas or it just, you know, it, it's not something that they believe in, people start to really question their own reality. That's something that I still continue to do. I still continue to give myself a, a new purpose because my purpose isn't just one. It's my purpose is to continue to grow and learn. So there's always new experiences and that might be my purpose. Things like that is what has really grasped me into my own reality and just creating this reality for me, but also trying to help people in their purpose in life as well. So, I mean, it's, it's okay to, to, to be stuck sometimes. It's okay. Just know that there's something that you can do to change that. Uh, it might be out of our, our power, but I'm pretty sure that a lot of people do have this control. It's, it's the mind is so powerful. The mind is so powerful. And I can understand why psychology is, I, re I remember in studying, studying in college, a lot of people used to question psychology, especially from a scientific standpoint, because one of the first things that bring psychology to life, right, is this mysterious black box. What's in that black box? And people start to say, well, what is the mind? What is consciousness? And that's where psychology kind of comes from. But till this day, nobody knows what the mind is. Where is it? In the brain, in the heart, in my feet? Where is it, right? So I would always get questioned. I started to obviously question myself. But I think psychology has evolved to a point where it's used as a tool and it gets confused a little bit with the coaching. Uh, but I think psychology does become a, a scientific tool where we're able to kind of uh, have a little bit of control over um, behavior, where we are able to control behavior. And if you notice, behavior has a lot to do with how you feel. So let's start there, right? Let's do that correlation. Emotions is something real, scientifically proven. Dopamine is a chemical reaction that releases what we call happiness, right? I mean, I could be in love with food. Somebody puts a piece of pizza in front of my face. I'm the happiest person, right? And the same goes for sadness. And so there are exercises, for example, right? People love to do exercise. Well, that increases dopamine as well. I think psychology has an opportunity to just really get into more of the behavioral and, and, and this emotional aspect that we can also influence. Most of the things that I try to do with my patients is really, well, let's find, let, let's, let's, let's see what tools you have that you can utilize to make yourself feel better, right? And obviously speaking is something that also releases some sort of uh, dopamine. It, it, it makes you feel better when you're able to just release stress or vent, like people like to say. And um, 
Yeah, it's sad. that that's something that to me it has really questioned and really built upon this character and respect for psychology. I, I'm a big advocate in what I do, and I would love to continue exploiting those other areas of psychology. Psychology keeps evolving, especially in today's day. So I think there's uh there, there's there's so you don't necessarily have to be a psychologist to understand this world. I think we have the opportunity, like I said, through social media to really generate great impact in communities and individuals in in workforce. It's all in our hands. It's just a matter of really connecting with other individuals in other um, I like to do it a lot with my family. I come from a family that, you know, I have chemical engineers, I have construction workers. I'm like, you use psychology. My mom's a hairstylist. My mom is the perfect psychologist. <laughs> she's the perfect psychologist. Women walk in there and she will tell me that she's a, she, she's, a, she's a psychologist and you can ask any hairstylist. It's absolutely true or a barber. So yeah, it's, it's something I'm passionate about. I love speaking about it. I, I also just don't like just speaking. I like, you know, to talk the talk and walk the walk. So I like to implement that as well in any aspect or in what we do in our in our day to impact the community for sure yeah and you you are so right because psychology keep evolving um yeah. so it's good that we keep learning more and more about it and keep educating ourselves and to help ourselves and other people it's so very important um and also I want you to uh, talk a little bit more about your your work in Colombia, which I don't know if you continue <laughs> with that here yeah, in yeah. the US. Um, I, I want people to learn like more about you because you are a professional. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I want them to know. Absolutely. So yeah, and I think it's important also to speak upon uh, the work I did in Colombia, because it's it's it is the reason of the work I do now. It, it, it hit a growth spur professionally, personally, emotionally. I mean, all the illies in the world. But yeah, so Colombia. When I went to Colombia in two thousand and fifteen, I remember I was actually. Um, I was living in New York at first up until 2015. I was going through a lot. I was really trying to find myself. I wasn't content with the work I was doing. I wasn't content with the person I was. Uh, per, um, if I'm being honest, I really wasn't. So when I went to Columbia, it also took me a while to get into college at first. I had to learn Spanish. I wasn't a Spanish speaker fluently when I went to Columbia. Um, I was born into a Colombian household, but I only spoke Spanish to my grandma and it was, you know, very small. So when I went to Colombia, I had to learn Spanish first. Uh, the first thing my aunt did was she contracted a Spanish professor. And around six months, I was writing essays. I was learning how to speak. And then when I got into college it was really a challenge. It was very tough. There's a term, I don't know if a lot of people in, in your community utilize it, but when somebody comes from the United States or somebody just has a persona that looks white, they call them gringo. So that's something that I went through when I was in Colombia. But it, it wasn't like I was being bullied. Uh, the Colombian people are amazing. I uh, shout out to my Colombian people um, and great food too. But I, I was I was very welcomed and I got a lot of help through my professors and La Universidad de Ceci. They really helped me out with my Spanish and generally just learning the material that was given to me because it was all given in Spanish. So they were very patient with me when it came to test grading or just communicating with me, just very patient. And the way that I did it was being involved. So I didn't shy away. I, I tried to speak my best. I went out to the city by myself. I went to learn how to dance salsa by myself just interacting with people, it, I mean, culture is amazing. So that's a way that I did it. And if you ask a lot of my family members, they will say, Mateo is a social butterfly. He will just go by himself. And um, Colombia is known to be dangerous. Too. <laughs> so I don't know if it was smart, but it, it paid off in the long run. So yeah, I, I, I learned how to pick up that language fairly quickly. Thank, you know, it was it was not hard. It was It was a challenge, but it wasn't hard. 
And after that, a lot of great things came. Um, I got involved in, um, in my community as well. So I did voluntary work when I was in Colombia. In my early semesters, I was actually a English professor for one of the, and professor in that, like, you know, I just, but I was an English, more of an English tutor for uh, a community that was in a vulnerable state, right? Uh, a community that just didn't have a lot. And there was this great professor of mine. Um, he was the one that invited me to be a part of that project, La Granja. And I went there for the first time. And I'll just tell this really funny story because you know how I dress. And I was dressing like this. <laughs> I said, okay, I'm going to be a tutor. I'm going to dress like this. And when I go to this, I mean, there's barely any roads. People are, you know, and they're not really uh, brick wall houses. They're kind of, you know, they're, they're just very, it's, I mean, I, you can imagine if you're in Haiti what these houses or what this community looks like. There's not a lot of resources. So when I get there, I'm asking for directions and people are avoiding me. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, not even Google Maps gets there. So I call my professor and he's like, no, just uh, just keep walking straight, make a left. You know how <laughs> you'll see the stop sign, make that's, a right. <laughs> that's how we laid it. Uh, you will see a green car and yeah. then you will see a, a bacon car. Then yeah. and, the, car, and, and the lady car. selling the empanadas, you're yes. right there, you're <laughs> close. So I tell my professor I'm getting close. All right, so I finally get there. And I remember when everything was over, He, I. it turned out that he was a big leader of his community. So. At the end, a lot of the people from the community started coming to the center because they always got together at night, you know, the adults, and they were providing education for young children in the day, you know, the morning and the day, music, I was there for English. And when the community got together, they're like, oh, he's with you. And the professor was like, yeah, make sure you, he's gonna be coming here, make sure you take care of him. They're like, oh, we thought he was a, a cop. We didn't want to tell, because now you got to think about in the community, a lot of things go on as well, right? I mean, they want to get better, but sometimes, uh, and I'm, and you know, I don't want to speak a lot of what, what they do, but it's it just turns out, you know, you got to be very careful with who you introduce to that community as well, right? You don't know who that person is. So I got that. And, and that's how I kind of started to getting involved in communities. I knew that I could be a part of something bigger than just myself. I could be a part of a community and I could be inviting as long as I just had the right energy. I believe a lot of energy and the energy that I put out is something that I want as well, as long as it's positive. So that was my early days in Colombia when I started, um, kind of just uh, there's I should also say in Colombia it's five years total minimum to get your degree out there and when you get your degree you don't you don't get like a bachelor's you don't get like a master's you get a title so when you graduate you are a psychologist or you are a chemical engineer you know and people refer to you this way it's just a respect it's a mutual thing and it's really it's really cool so out there I'm just a professional and my, I did my practices in, I, at first when I did my practices, six months of my practice was in CAPSI. It's El Consultorio de Atención Psicosocial, right? It's a consultant company. Well, it was part of the university, but it offered for free to uh, communities that didn't have a lot of resources, psychological attention or psychosocial attention, right? So when that when I got my um, opportunity to work there or do my internship there, COVID hit, right? And this was something that you did face to face. COVID hit, so everything was over the phone. Everything was over the phone, which was okay. People were going through things, so it was okay to talk to the phone. We did so well that it still continues to this day. It was born. The 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 telephone is now something that you can also speak or Zoom with with a professional, with somebody and say, so, I mean, COVID did bring a lot of other things, but I just think it just brought stuff to the light. Anyway, um, when when that happened, I thought that was a great opportunity. I should also speak about the what was going on during the time of COVID. I think a very scary moment in, in Colombia that I went through, and, and it was a very eye-opening as well, a very humbling experience, was that Colombia was also going through 
uh, manifestations. They were trying to, you know, go with all political figures. They weren't, and, and, and you know our country, these are people that will revolt. They will get, um, I mean, they could go out on the streets. A lot of people get together and they will go and manifest and protest and they will do damage as well. And it gets to a point where now police forces are going against the people and it gets very bad. So during COVID, what was going on was I was on the phone and you were hearing gunshots outside, right? So now I'm I'm in a point where I'm trying to find, I, I it was so overwhelming. I remember thinking to myself that there was something wrong with me again. Like I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing because sometimes you want to be strong. Sometimes you want to take that in. You do realize what's going on outside, but you're stuck now in these walls and you don't know what to do. So while that was going on, it was very difficult. And then at the same time, I was taking classes. You can, you can hear other students crying. Teachers were crying at this point. And it wasn't just COVID. It was because of what was going on outside. You were hearing a lot of things. That was so humbling. It was such an experience. I mean, uh, I, I I still haven't gotten to a point here where I will like live that, but living that was it, it was it was pretty traumatizing. But I took it and it made me a better person again. And I said like I'm very uh, I I'm just uh, grateful for what I have because there's a lot of people that were out there their lives were being taken because they were fighting for something they believe in. So that to me was very eye-opening and I went through that. And so I started getting more involved also. I mean, I, I started going out protesting too. I was like, you know what? Like I have to do something. I, I, I want to believe in something too. But it, was, it wasn't because of, I just thought that it was a great, opportunity also to learn what was going on in the world and I was learning what was going on in Colombia ultimately and I know that you we were speaking about it the other day of what was going on in Haiti not too long ago and what continues to go on to this day so that's something that I just didn't think I was I, I was saying to myself Colombia gave me an opportunity to you know go to a university and that's group thankful because of my family because they believe in that but then I was like what really is Colombian history Right. What are they going through right now? Why are they considered a third world country? So I started going out and seeing for myself what Colombia was really about and is about. And it's very corrupt. There's a lot of greedy people that exploit Colombia and their natural resources and continues to happen. And it happens all over the world. I mean, eventually it's probably going to happen on U.S. soil where we're just going to run out of na our natural resources. And I don't want to get like into all of that, <laughs> but it's just, it's just something that I learned. And after I did those six months, uh, COVID, COVID ended. And then I was uh, able to actually go to a psychiatric hospital and, and uh, work in, in that environment. So in a psychiatric hospital, um, I learned a lot as well. I, I thought I was a grateful person, right? Um, I learned that personal as well, that um, working under a psychiatrist, she taught me so much. She taught me about diagnosis, um, you know, that psychiatric level of understanding the human uh, behavior that we only saw in the university for a short amount of time. But it was such a uh, it was an amazing opportunity. I saw I work with all ages, by the way, I, I work with children, uh, young adults, adults and older adults as well. And in a psychiatric ward, you will have just about any of the ages and also female or male and et cetera in that in that uh, general aspect. But it was it was also an, uh, an eye opening experience for me working in that environment because it's not for everybody as well. Uh, it takes a toll on people. I saw things that not a lot of people probably will see in their lives, but it was it was very eye opening to me. And I thought, wow, like, I can't believe that I'm actually doing this. And again, it was just trying to help somebody. I mean, you can see when somebody's in a total state of psychosis and the only way that they will probably calm down is with a sedative, right? But I always believed in the word. So I always tried to do my best that this person can speak. And if that's their reality, if that's their reality, then I have to respect that reality. And I have to kind of get into that reality as well. Because if they're speaking, well, they're actually doing better now. And I was like, wow, this is powerful. And I started, but it doesn't work on everybody, right? And I can understand that. It's just 
a matter of curiosity and trying to really get to know well, what works for this person. And those are tools that you have to exploit as well. If I have this, this, this awesome way of looking at life and looking at people, then I should also have a respect for that person and their world. So it was, it was, it was also a very eye-opening experience. I respect everything that I did in Colombia and that work. And once I was done there, I, um, I also should mention that, you know, psychology has its perspectives, organizational, social, clinical, many more. I also learned that now there's um, sports psychology not too long ago, which is awesome because I love sports. <laughs> and if I was very, if I knew about that in college, maybe it would have been different, but I got into clinical psychology. I got a lot into clinical. And when I first got into psychology, I really wanted to learn organizational psychology because I said, well, I like business. I like psychology. Why don't I try to do the both? And I learned about neuromarketing and I really wanted to exploit that. But then I got very involved with clinical psychology. I am a clinical psychologist from Columbia. And once I graduated, I put together a committee with most of my colleagues, which is called Humanamente. And what we do in Humanamente is we offer a virtual uh, con uh, consultant one-on-one uh, -on -one through Zoom or Google Meets, but it's for now it's virtual. And it, it's just this way of, of also exploiting uh, this, what, what is now, I don't know if before COVID this was a thing, doing psychology one-on-one, -on -one. but once I graduated, we came up with this idea. Let's do something for our community. Let's give back. And that's where we're at right now. So I still do it through here because I'm not breaking any laws. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I, my community is Colombian community. So most of my patients are in Colombia. I just happen to be here right now. So that's one of the things that we do. I'm very happy. I love my team. Shout out to my team. I love them. What we do is an incredible opportunity. It will shed light as well on, on opening doors to, to being in touch with communities it's not just about going and into a consultant and, and, you know, their office, which is marvelous, but it's also about this. So shout out to them because one of the other things that we do is we also move ourselves on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and I'll drop that down so that you can, you know, kind of promote that because that would be amazing because what we do is that we promote mental health. We promote tips on how to understand these, these terms that are used, what is a toxic relationship? What is depression? What is anxiety? And it's really understanding because now people, like I, I was telling you, I don't say that I'm depressed because I don't want people to understand or misunderstand better yet that conception because it's such a, it, it's taking, it's taken as a broad term, but in reality, there's more to depression than than being sad. So I don't want people to get in the misconception and the same thing goes for anxiety, right? So what we try to do is, well, this is anxiety. These are some of the uh, things that you can, uh, some of the symptoms, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're an anxious or a depressive person, right? Here are better yet, here are things that you can do so that you don't maybe feel that way. And it doesn't always work, but I believe that we are doing, we're, we're just getting so close to try to uh, get people to understand. And I say people in general, because I think even a psychologist has to understand what, or a psychiatrist or a doctor or the business or the lawyer has to understand these terms and that they're being used, they're being misused nowadays. And people on social media misuse them so much. You can go on, you know, keeping up with the Kardashians and they're always depressed, they're always anxious, but they're throwing it out to young people. 13, 12 year old, and now a 12 year old is depressed. And now they're put in this box from such a young age. And we're seeing uh, suicidal rays at such high levels. And it's sad to see, but it's because of this. So I think promoting the right way can also benefit people in the long run. And I'm sorry if I talk a lot. <laughs> no, you, are so right. you are so right. And, and I thank you for, you know, um, educating like educated pe people about those things and, and like you said people tend to misunderstand 
tell or misunderstood the concept or like oh depression or anxiety even yeah. yeah like but there's always so much to it and you can't you can be depressed but probably not it's yeah. all depend and i like the fact that you and your group um like shift every like details about it but also tell people yeah you could like probably not depression you know and, and I, i just and mm -hmm. i want to say one thing and i'm sorry to interrupt you but the reason why we also do it is because personally i uh, we also don't believe in the mass consumption of pharmaceuticals right and i think there's another way just because you're sad you don't have to take this happy pill or which is what most doctors do and i won't get into my my beliefs because those are just personal but the reason why we do it is because we also believe that there's another way that you don't have to rely on a substance to make you feel better you already have the tools you already have this body it, it, it's about and and i respect pharmaceuticals when they're used the right way of course i'm not down i don't mean to like sound wrong it's, i respect it that's what i'm saying but there's a mass consumption uh, consume of of pills and pharmaceuticals um substances in general so that's what we try to promote as well right not not really it's very implicit it's a message that's implicit because it's not necessarily don't consume this it's more of here are other ways that you can you know kind of just look at that so i'm sorry i just wanted to put that out there too. no no, no. I, I i like that I, i like that and i like the um the way that you guys like you know i like the approach yeah thank you and, and it's so important like for a community like to understand those points because they need that and, and having your like your program your group of people and yourself helping them to understand those like this concept I, I, that, that's huge that's big and i will encourage ev anyone or everyone mm -hmm. who's watching this video to check your like your website or to check your social media and 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 you know keep educating yeah. themselves yeah thank you and, and, and i'm sure that you are always uh, well not i'm sure i know that you are very open <laughs> to questions and also um if they like, they need any i don't know any advice <laughs> yeah anything you will be um you know um absolutely absolutely i, I really yeah. appreciate that i know that on my um Uh, on our account, we're all, we're actually looking to promote, you know, not uh, promote your, because I think what you do as an individual is a powerful message. I mean, you inspire me in a lot of ways. And I remember I told you, because one of the things that you said was that you're always looking to do the next thing and you don't really enjoy the praise that people give you because you're like, oh, this is it. What's next? And I'm like, you, Celine, take it in. It's okay. It's okay to slow down, praise that. And I admire that about you because you're always thinking about the next thing. I mean, you're a person that does so much, just not just for the community, but just a person that does so much for themselves. And I know that you're always looking to do knowledge wise or professionally wise, you're just on that. And I'm like, damn, like <laughs> this girl, she, she's, she only has one she only has one motor go <laughs> well, yeah. i'm so happy that you said that and i know this is not the first time that you said it and, and yeah. i think like people like you and other people in my life that keep inspire me and I keep like oh okay because like slow down accept the praise yeah. <laughs> it's something that i am still learning yeah. but like i understand the importance of it like sometimes we have to slow down and okay reflect all right you slend this is it and yeah it's okay to think about what's next but it's okay to take it in and, and feel proud of yourself of your hard work and, and things like that and look around you you are inspire others and, and that's why i i think i always said whatever you are doing i always said that to myself and to other people 
whatever you are doing, do it well. Yeah. Are watching, believe it or not, they are yeah. watching. <laughs> yeah, so um, there's always a camera around us, even though we see it or not. So we want to be the best example, that only the best version of ourselves. So yeah. Awesome message. <laughs> awesome. No, you got it. I think you nailed it. That's absolutely what I believe as well. I think um, we do need uh, a lot of time to reflect. And I think that's what praising sometimes allows you to do. It's just reflect on these great achievements that I'm making. And yes, it's good to plan ahead as well, right? Um, and I remember I got to a point where I thought that life was just like catching up. I'm like, oh my God, you know, my friends are already graduating. I'm not. And right so that's a thing like when i went to college i was old, mo mostly <laughs> i was older than most of my colleagues so i just thought you know i thought at first it was embarrassing but then i was like wait we're learning from each other right we're learning from each other professor he's way older than us and he's you know just because he's teaching he would always say i'm learning from you guys it's okay you know sometimes to i just think so much is put into our heads that we also judge ourselves right we judge ourselves and it it stops us as this book to create that other chapter and all the chapters that we have in our book that is our life depends on us and how we do it so it's up to you right how that book is going to be and i greatly believe that we we have that purpose that you and i and a lot of people who have been on this show have that purpose that is just spreading a message it's uh it's uh it's just it, it's really inspiring so yeah no thank i i really want to thank you for having me i i, I think i'm going to reflect a lot <laughs> <laughs> i'm going to reflect a lot after this but i'm just really happy that we got to speak on this level i know we do it at our on our own time but it's really amazing that we got this because i know you have your public i have my public and it's a way that we are able to also in a way talk to them right yeah and well right before you go um any advice that you want to share or to give um to not only my community but to mm -hmm. anyone who's watching especially when it comes to um people who's going hard on themselves uh or comparing themselves to like uh to other like people whether it's peers or family members and uh, or like or what whatever they like you know they are focused on like what society are probably thinking about them and and, and things like that so what what advice do you have for like for those people, which including like myself, <laughs> you know, myself included, uh, because yeah, yeah I, I, I think things like that affect uh, like anyone. Well, thanks for putting it. <laughs> Very difficult for me before I go, right? <laughs> but I had another 20 minutes now responding. <laughs> No, I just think I, to me, it's very difficult to answer that question because everybody goes through something different. Every community goes through something different. It's hard to put yourself in somebody else's shoes and not judge a person, right? I always believe you don't know what that person is going through, but even you might be going through something and your day may be just a mess. So you don't really... Are, you're not able to appreciate the small things in life. And I don't, I just think it, that's what makes it so difficult for me to give advice because I know I'm not speaking to just one person. I'm speaking, you know, to a lot of people. And that makes me realize how much work I have to do on myself. And that might be like a, around those terms, like that might be like that type of advice understand that this world that we live in is just it, it's bigger than just us it's bigger than this person who's in this body because there's so much going on uh, and i just think that if we really do try every day to come together try to be positive then that we can make a greater impact in this world and a positive impact and i understand it's difficult because there's so much going on right now there's just so much but I think at the more that people really inform themselves, the more that people try to go out there, do the right thing, 
not be afraid of messing up, not be afraid of being judged, you will be, you will have a, sa a, a satisfaction that nobody can take away from you. And you, that's a feeling that is uncomparable to anything. And I think that's like some, some of the advice that I try to have on my day-to-day -day basis. So it, it's almost to understand and I, I'm, I try to refrain away from using these type of words, but understand that this is a very subjective world. So I know that I'm my own being, try not to be like an egotistical person because ego is, it, it can make you or break you, but you know, just try to understand people in their individuality, not just as a whole, just as an individuality. And one more thing I will wanna say that it's okay to ask for help and it's okay to receive help. I will say that because a lot of people think that because they're feeling this way, they don't have to talk to anybody. They will just fix it themselves. It doesn't matter who it is. Talk to whoever, talk to your plants, talk to your cat, <laughs> do something. I mean, it's okay to speak and it's okay to look for professional help as well. It's okay to vent. It's okay to talk about your feelings. And if somebody wants to help you, it's also okay to receive that help. And I think that's like kind of my message that I will end with because you did feel it very difficult for me, but it, it, that's just my way of kind of looking at things. Well, your answer, like for me, wasn't that. <laughs> and you all make, you almost make me cry. <laughs> Thank um, you. Sorry. Yeah. And I, like you mentioned earlier, uh, after this um, episode, uh, self-reflection is going to be popping yeah. in and because uh, we talked about some great things and share some great things with the uh, audience also. And I, I'm sure there will be questions and I know that you will be there to answer them and myself. So I want to thank you once again. Thank you so much um, just for accepting my inv uh, invitation just uh, to share some of your experiences and knowledge with uh, my community, with my audience, and with Anuyo Napran Konlat, which in English, it's get let's get to know each no, other. So yeah. I, I think we are getting to know each other yeah. more and <laughs> more. And yeah, so before you leave, please let's try to say Anu. Anu. Yon. Yon. Apran. Aplak. Apran. Ablan. On. On. Lot. Lot. That's a lot. <laughs> I should mention, <laughs> I have a bad memory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Anu Yon Apran Kon Lot. Let's get to know each other. <laughs> I'll go with the English one. Let's get to know each other. I will try to, <laughs> to do it some other time. But thank you so much, Yuseline, for having me. Um, yeah, and thank you to everyone who's watching. Again, I will uh, promote. I'm sure that Yuseline will have it if you guys want to follow. Anumanamente. And I'm so happy. I'm really happy that I was here. And I hope to be back. <laughs> Us, you will. <laughs> Thank you again and enjoy the rest of your night. Bye. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Lovely.